Hola, ¿qué tal? Hello, how are you? Today we want to address both older people and their relatives and carers. We will review the options for maintaining autonomy, analyzing the pros and cons of each. We will then be in a better position to discuss them with healthcare staff and to choose according to personal values. As people age, some lose their ability to perform everyday tasks such as eating, dressing, bathing, cleaning, cooking, using the telephone, transport or managing money. But how does this happen? Well, knowing the most common causes can help us prevent this loss of autonomy. Let's see what they are. Prolonged bed rest, either at home or in hospital. Side effects of medication. The need for invasive devices, such as a catheter, oxygen cylinder, wheelchair, or other walking aids. Having more than one illness at the same time. Worsening of a chronic illness. Oh. A personal crisis. In addition, certain risk factors should be taken into account, which should alert us. Weight loss or weight gain. Slower walking speed. Decreased grip strength. Lack of balance. Problems with thinking or memory. Depression. High drug use, including alcohol or tobacco use. Few social contacts and activities, or low level of physical activity. People aged 65 and over who have experienced a fall, a limitation in the use of a shoulder, arm or hand, or, in general, a loss of ability to manage their own symptoms, treatment, the physical and psychosocial consequences, and the physical and psychosocial consequences, and the lifestyle changes that come with a chronic illness. Let us now turn to the first of the six strategies we will consider. Walking, aquatic, balance, strength or flexibility exercises can and should be adapted to older people. They can be done individually or with others, at home or in specific facilities. The activities should produce a feeling of warmth and make breathing a little difficult. How much? The measure is to be able to hold a conversation, but not to be able to sing. Benefits. 12% improve their ability to perform daily activities thanks to physical activity, and 2% are able to walk faster. 16% increase their endurance, while the effects on balance are somewhat mixed, and there is little evidence of improvement. On the other hand, there is good evidence of other benefits, including reduced risk of chronic disease and premature death. Independence in daily activities. Improved fitness and bone health. Reduced risk of heart disease. Improved mood. Reduced risk of falls and improved sleep. Damage. Some people get stiffness if they start their exercise program too enthusiastically. Other problems may also be experienced such as mild sprains, tendinitis, joint pain or exacerbation of osteoarthritis. One practical aspect to talk about is the time it takes for exercise to bring benefits. Wait at least three weeks if you exercise for 20 minutes, three times a week, or for two hours once a week. In reality, whatever the duration and frequency of exercise, it takes time. Yoga includes physical, mental, and spiritual practices that originated in ancient India. India. It involves stretching as a kind of low-impact physical exercise and may include meditation, visualization, breathing exercises, and music. Benefits. 63% of practitioners increase their balance through yoga and are more likely to have normal mobility compared to those who do not. Have normal mobility compared to those who don't. Harm. Older adults who practice yoga may experience mild adverse effects, such as knee pain, lower back pain, or mild muscle strain. 
Some may also aggravate existing lower back pain. There is also a practical aspect to consider, and that is that it takes at least eight weeks to feel the benefits, practicing one or two times a week in one-hour sessions. In short, it requires more time than other types of exercise, as we have seen. These services are provided by healthcare personnel, such as occupational therapists, physiotherapists, and nurses. They enable the elderly person to continue their daily activities and tasks independently, according to their own goals. After an initial assessment, the healthcare professional prepares an action plan of care, preventive measures, and rehabilitation to compensate for the limitations already present in the person. The plan can take at least six weeks to complete, depending on individual needs. Benefits 25% of beneficiaries improve their ability to carry out daily activities thanks to this. Intervention. There is no reduction in the risk of death or hospital admissions, but 10% avoid emergency room visits, and 11% avoid admission to a long-term care facility. Harm. Some older people are dissatisfied with rehabilitation or occupational therapy at home because they were not adequately consulted or informed, because the program was short-lived, or because they observed different treatment from one patient to another by professionals. There are some practical issues to consider, such as possible delays in accessing public services, or the cost of private services. Smart homes have technologies to monitor what is happening and improve the experience of the home's residents. In healthcare, these technologies can be used to monitor the health of occupants, for example, their weight, pulse, blood pressure, falls, and movements. For example, their weight, pulse, blood pressure, falls, and movements. They can also help maintain their well-being, for example, by monitoring air quality. Benefits. Older people living in smart homes are more likely to be able to carry out their daily activities compared to those who do not live in them. 7% avoid hospitalization in the first month of use thanks to these technologies. Otherwise, current research shows no effect of smart home technologies on illness or injury. Harm. Some older people are concerned about becoming too dependent on these technologies. When talking about the practicalities, a major one is price. In addition to the cost of buying and installing the equipment, there is often a subscription fee, which can be in the region of 120 to 150 euros per month. Further issues, it should be borne in mind that some older people live in remote or underserved areas and may therefore have difficulty accessing this type of technology. It may also be difficult for some people to familiarize themselves with sensors and the operation of smart home technologies. Finally, the installation of parts of the equipment in certain areas, such as the bedroom or bathroom, may be complicated or inconvenient due to their type or size. Self-management programs are educational and supportive interventions provided by healthcare staff to encourage people with chronic diseases to play a more active role in their health. The aim is to increase the skills and confidence to manage their own health problems. These programs may include, in addition to training, information about the illness and training in skills and strategies to manage the consequences of the illness or disability, and social support through communication with other patients or health professionals. Benefits Those who participate in these programs may be more independent in their daily activities than those who are not enrolled in a program, however, mobility does not seem to be affected. Between 12 to 17 percent of participants avoid hospitalization during the first month of the program. No negative aspects of these programs have been found, apart from the fact that some older people find them exhausting because of the time required. 
They consist of activities and games that stimulate mental abilities, e.g. reading, crossword puzzles, or solving Sudoku. Crossword puzzles or solving Sudoku puzzles. These activities can be done individually or in groups, under the supervision of a professional. Benefits 11% of older people maintain or improve their ability to perform everyday activities through exercise, and 22% increase their processing speed, i.e. decrease the time between receiving information and responding to it. Harm Some people may feel somewhat anxious about doing well if the exercises are done in a group. It consists of actively monitoring the person's health without the person submitting to any plan or adopting any lifestyle changes. Lifestyle changes. Benefits. The major one is to avoid making a change if the results are not certain. There is a certain proportion of people who, despite making changes to improve their independence, do not achieve any improvement. This can be frustrating. Another benefit is to avoid the drawbacks or harms associated with the strategy in question, which we have seen in each one. Finally, things can get better without doing anything, as is the case for 49% of older people in this situation. This percentage may be helped by the fact that each individual develops particular strategies that are best suited to his or her specific conditions. Harm. People who opt for watchful waiting are less likely to improve their independence than those who choose one of the other options than those who choose one of the other options mentioned above. But monitoring health without undergoing any treatment or lifestyle changes increases the risk of death, as well as the chances of being admitted to a long-term care facility. The feeling of helplessness caused by being in danger of losing autonomy and not doing anything about it, for whatever reason, must also be taken into account here. This, in turn, can lead to a perceived deterioration in quality of life. So, as you can see, there is a lot to consider. I hope I have helped you to make a good decision. Whatever it is, I hope it goes very well. Thank you very much.